Okay, let's have a look here. We got a vampire sorcerer with the locks. Damn, I could do with some hair. Uh, but no, uh, Yakuza Vault Fighter. Ooh, Vault Fighter. Fallout 4, I've been watching that. No, must not get distracted. I have a mission. Uh, what's this? Uh, Shadow Monarch. Uh, you know what? I'm just gonna shove my <coughs> homebrew class right in here. And uh, he'll never know. <laughs> okay, time to get out of here. Huh, yeah, what the? What was that? Um, is anyone there? Okay, I gotta make a video anyway. Okay, let's see. I know I've got a few things in order, but what is next? The spell broken? That's odd. I don't remember this one. Let's see. Kind of has a barbarian vibe to it. Ooh, that's interesting. Okay, yeah, let's take a look at this one. It's 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 pretty nice. So it looks like the spell broken here is a barbarian light class made by the Ugly Goblin. I'll have to look into how this actually got onto my desk later, but since I've already got the homebrew here, we might as well take a look at it. So let's hop right into the review of the Spellbroken. Spellbroken are created when a large magical event or disaster imparts a massive amount of magic onto a single person, almost tearing their body apart and effectively turning them into a magical ticking time bomb. Now, at first glance, this might seem a little bit strange to compare in any way to the Barbarian, since you only have a D8 hit die and no armor whatsoever. But we'll get into why I made that distinction here in a little bit. For now, we're going to focus on your spellcasting, which is unique here because it doesn't use spell slots like every other spellcaster does. Instead, this uses the optional spell point system, where a certain number of points are given each level to cast spells with. It is a little bit more complicated than just spell slots, but it makes it a little bit more unique, and I like that. The Spellbroken gets its own complete spell list, which I'll throw up here somewhere on the screen here. It's it's a lot. They are a full caster, so cantrips all the way to 9th level spells. Now, aside from spellcasting, you get something else here that makes other spellcasters very angry, since whenever you are targeted or even in the AoE of a spell, you can just start chowing down on their spell like a bag of shredded cheese at midnight. And you do this with your main feature, Spell Eater. You can only eat spells of certain levels depending on what level you are, and you also have a limit per day of how much magic you can eat at once. Like right now at level 1, you can only snack on one first level spell until you need to take a nap. You do get a little bit of wiggle room with this with your next feature limit break, effectively letting you add your constitution modifier to your spell eater limit. So you can eat something a little bit higher level than you're normally able to if you need to in a pinch, like a fireball. Just don't let your eyes get bigger than your stomach, or else all that magic is coming right back out. And it's not going to be anything like what you're thinking. No. Instead of just losing those drinks you paid for, you could very well lose your mind and even control of your body, as doing this forces you into your spellbroken form, which you can normally enter as a bonus action. This transformation tears away at the threads that hold your body and mind together. You transform, dropping your intelligence down to 5, and cutting off your spellcasting from anything outside of cantrips and certain spells granted by the forms. Now these transformations are powerful, but what you turn into depends on what kind of magic gave you these powers in the first place. Maybe you were the subject of a horrible transmutation incident, and when you transform you grow claws as your body swells inside and the mind of a beast takes over your body. Maybe you had a strange magical crystal embedded in your body, and whenever it's exposed to large quantities of magic, it grows and propagates before breaking through the surface and covering your body in a thick layer of magical gemstones increasing your AC, and protecting your weakened mind from outside attacks. Or worst case scenario, you were a sacrifice in a failed ritual, and now your soul is tethered somewhere between life and death, and whenever you transform, you burn away your body, leaving only a husk of spirit and bone as your body and soul fuse with a chaotic magic inside you, making you extremely light and dexterous, while also letting you see into the ethereal plane and teleport through it to other areas that you can see. These transformations are all, well, traumatizing to say the least, depending on your character. Especially the soul form, having your body torn apart and reformed every time you use this cannot be a fun time. 
But hey, at least it stops you from losing any limbs, right? Now, like I mentioned, whenever you go into this form, you lose access to most of your spells, but each form comes with its own special spells, like Hellish Rebuke for Beast, Shatter and Mirror Image for Crystal, and support spells like Revivify for the Soul Form. All their spells pretty well fit into their themes too. The Beast does damage, Crystal Form is more of a tank, and Soul Form does support stuff. Oh, and do remember, when you exit this form, you get one level of exhaustion, or two if you were forced into it with Spell Eater. Kinda like Berserker Barbarian, but this is not as bad and I will tell you why right now. All this extra magic does more than just mold your flesh like clay. It can refresh your body too, letting you spend hit die to remove exhaustion. And you also just get rid of more exhaustion points when you finish a long rest. So if you have five points, you could reasonably get rid of them in one rest. You of course get your first ASI at level four, but no extra attack at level five because this is a spellcasting class. Even if it's called the Barbarian of Casters, it's still a caster. I could see it for the beast form since you're a bit more melee capable, but it's still not necessary. But what the beast form does get is a base increase of 5 feet to their speed, or 10 feet while they're transformed. Crystal Spellbroken become resistant to all stabbing or cutting attacks, magical or otherwise. Just still keep an eye out for any magical hammers. Oh, and the soul form gets to be even tankier, becoming just flat out immune to any weapon attacks that are not magical and getting temp HP on top of that. The flesh might be weak, but it doesn't matter if you don't take damage in the first place. And after that, you get to finish off the early game levels by kind of just doing what Gale does in Baldur's Gate 3 and eating magical items. But you're not feeding some hungry arcane bomb in your chest. This gives you temp HP based on the rarity of the item, but it's also destroyed in the process since, you know, you're eating it, like, you're not just sucking the magic out of it, you are eating that sword. I mean, unless it has charges, then you are just eating the magic, since any item that has charges, you just suck the charges out, and the item isn't destroyed. So, having like, a wand of fireball, or even just a wand of magic missile, is like having an infinite chocolate bar. That covers levels 1 through 7, and honestly, they seem pretty nice to me you get a good grasp of how these forms are going to affect you in combat. Like the beast form letting you rush in and blast off powerful spells like a wild beast. With the crystal form, you could be a tank right there next to the fighter on the front lines. Or be a spooky ghost support character healing your allies from the beyond. I do still kind of think that the beast form should have some form of extra attack, maybe a bonus action or something like that, but again, not necessary. And hey, if you are liking this so far, you should subscribe. We are trying to hit 40k by the end of the year, and every little bit helps, so subscribe, like the video, and all that good stuff. And of course, go check out the Ugly Goblin who made this class in the first place. I have a link to his channel down below, and of course a link to the actual document for this homebrew. He does his own subclass stuff, skill trees, and a bunch more, so again, go check him out and subscribe to him, he does great stuff. But now we can move on to the mid-game levels. Starting off, of course, you get your ASI at level 8, and shortly after that, you get your next form feature at level 10. Each form gets a different once-per-day use of Spell Eater. The Beast form gets to learn the spell they consume, and can cast that spell as if it was their own, until the end of their transformation. The Crystal form can just reflect the spell back at the caster like they pulled out an Uno Reverse card. And fitting for the soul form, since they are made of magic, they get to heal off of the spell they consume. You also get one of the coolest features here at level 11, Spell Well. Letting you use your Spell Eater limit like a second pool of spell points. So at this level, that is 22 to 27 additional points for casting your spells, depending on how high your constitution is. And using these points lets you lower your spell eater limit number so you don't have to worry about being forced into your spell broken form if you don't want to. You know, as long as you keep casting spells. And pretty quickly we are going to wrap up the mid levels, since for casters they're usually pretty front loaded with their actual features. But at level 14 you do get your final subclass feature. Beast forms get to stay transformed for uh, 
well, potentially forever, but they get one extra level of exhaustion for every hour they stay in that form. So at some point you're either going to die or stay in that form for the rest of your life, since it lasts until you choose to end it or you fall unconscious. Crystal Spellbroken become extremely hard to hit with magic, having all spell attacks made against them rolled at disadvantage, and getting to roll with advantage once per turn on any spell save. And finally, the spooky ghost boys can teleport up to three times as far as they used to, and don't have to spend any resources on it. I love all of these. Turning into a ghost to bamf around the battlefield scaring the crap out of your enemies, holding your arm out and no ewing a spellcaster sending their spell right back in their face, or just staying as a werewolf forever all seem like a blast on the battlefield. The last one especially for longer dungeons where you don't want to be using your forms back to back to back. I don't even feel like any of these are necessarily broken. Certainly strong in different situations, but not broken. So high level. A group of levels that many players don't ever see. I myself have only ever seen it twice and I've been playing since 5e's full release. And even then, I've only seen level 20 once, and that was because of a time skip that let us skip 5 levels. Now aside from your higher level spells, 8 and 9, you get your last two ASIs here, letting you finish up your build by rounding out some stats, or grabbing a feat you want. But being a full caster, this doesn't really get a lot outside of that, especially since all of these subclass features have already been grabbed. So the last thing to talk about here is your capstone feature, which all Spellbroken get, where you finally gain full control over your magic, achieving a perfect symbiosis with it, letting you transform into your Spellbroken form at will, and removing all of the negative side effects that come with it, like all the exhaustion levels, and dropping your intelligence to the same level as a block of cheese. On top of removing all the negative parts, you also get to take one extra action on that first turn when you transform. So you could use that to attack and cast a spell, or cast two spells potentially. Just keep in mind, you still can only cast spells from your form list, that restriction did not go away. But no matter what form you take, you are going to be a terrifying opponent, especially for enemy casters. I absolutely love this. Sure, you're not going to have as many hit points as a Barbarian, but in a setting with a lot of casters, this class is going to shine. Imagine taking a massive spell that would have crippled your party and turning that into your weapon against the caster. You should 100% give this a try in one of your games if you ever get the chance. As always, I want to thank my patrons for supporting the channel. You guys are amazing, and I promise I am trying to get ahead on videos again. It's just been really rough back-to-back -back things happening. Also, again, uh, thank you to the Ugly Goblin for letting me review his class here. Go watch his stuff. He is awesome. But that will about do it for today. I will see you all next time, and as always, have a wonderful day.